Hey there YouTube. Right, I'm gonna show you what's inside these AvoMeters. Um, as you can see, that one there has a metal, metal enclosure around this type of casing, this plastic type of casing. That's because this one is from the RAF, or at least it was made um, not so much for domestic. I'm not quite sure exactly uh, whether it's like a NATO thing or I've just cut back some leads that I had and cut some of the shroud off to give me leads for this one. Um, these leads came with this and this came after this so I'd already made up a set of leads and then I was going to have two and I just used some they're not too bad actually these are uh, it say cat, cat 3 thousand volts let me just put that underneath the light Yep, it says cat free. I know there's a function on this phone that I can. That's it. Press it so it focuses. I am just getting used to using this phone and I'm starting to really, really lo like it. It's the Samsung S7. And look, now I'm going to tap. Because look, it's all out of focus. But I'm just going to tap on that on the image on the screen and boom focuses in. That's the first camera I've had that I've noticed does it. I'm not going to say maybe the the, the first uh, phone that I've had that it does it on because I've just never noticed it before. I didn't really notice it on here by accident. Right, so let's just take these down out of there. Get on. Now these are going to come in handy when I Built myself a little multiplier with a slight twist. But I'll show you that in another video. Right, so I'm going to just shift these out of the way. I'm going to bring these down and just take the screws out and then we'll have a little look in the back. They come up nicely. You just gotta oh, can say that. So it's really easy and to leave the screw in. So hopefully you can see inside there that's not not mucked up at all. There's a little tiny bit staying there, but there's no corrosion. Mm, just smells of oh. Quite a bit of a small leather then, really. So that's the battery compartment. That's where the 15 volt cell goes. And this is where the D cell would go. Positive, positive. Two ends are negative. There's a spare battery, uh, spare fuse there. And a fuse that's in use. I can't remember what that's for. The fuse, I think it could be resistances. And even uh, this little, does that actually mark up on there? Yeah, even there, look, underneath each of these screws, there's a little mark, and that represents the bigger space, so you know that it goes on like this. You just screw that down with the battery. Batteries in. I've not put batteries in this one. I got a D cell in the other one, uh, and the only reason it's there is just for the novelty of using the resistance on the lower end, uh, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I do like it. I like it a lot. 
So that's the, uh, that's the battery on there. I'm going to just whip these screws out. I'll speed it up. This is the where the calibration stick will be. At least on this one, just look. And it's a bit dinked in there now because I peeled it back so I could undo the screw uh, when I first went into it. But uh, can you see what it says on that? Hopefully the camera can pick it up. I can't do that. The zoom, uh, the zoom, the focus thing. Force pushing down on the screw to undo it because there isn't any thread as such for it to come out of. It's uh, you can only hope that you can just catch part of the case and just gently. Gently, 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 gently. Hope it comes. That's not going back in. Going in the back side, that is. Okay. Now, let me just pull it out. Set that down there. Inside back here, so that's where the batteries have been. Now there's some. That's like a, a oily, like a grease type thing in the bottom. Now I wonder if that's there to, because the moisture goes on there. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that would be there. I mean, see the way these connections. They're quite tough than bits of spring, that's probably why it's put some quite a bit of force uh, to push the front out when you undo these two screws. It's surprisingly clean, but then I suppose not really. Look, there's a seal that goes around the outside. I'm just gonna lean it forward first. Does it sit on its own? It does. It'll sit on its own. Right, let me. Oh, okay, I just moved the light round. Okay, get a look and. Inside of this, it's, it is really clean. Doesn't look like there's been any moisture in there at all. I'll give it that glare. Let me see if I can just zoom in a little bit there. They're diodes down there. That's what that is. What's going on in there? Could these be resistors? Which are tailor made resistors? Because that's what this thing's all about, isn't it? There's no microprocessors, there's not even a plastic circuit board, like no PCBs, you've just got this. It's plastic, this Bakelite maybe, if that's what it is. But there's no damage on this, so I don't have to worry about breathing in any of the potential problems that 
come from Bakelite and as I'm not really boiling it either or smashing it up I don't see why I should get any dust problems it's really really clean I'm really impressed about how clean it is it's got some sort of grease or something on here I'm not going to let it fall no, I can't let it fall I've got something out the back there to prevent that from happening You know, in its day, this is like one of the best meters. Oh, my lamp's decided it's going to play. Oh, with an ancient. One of the best meters you could buy, the sort of forefather, really, of modern multimeters. The, how clean the joints are. There's no moisture in there. Very nice. And of course the movement. If I can get down there. These magnet each side. That is that. Is uh, uh, I'm going to assume that's the bit that gives this needle on this scale its accuracy well all together there's something to do with this uh, this is the zero in bobbin oh, that there I've been reading the manual uh, there's a couple of manuals out there for these and one of them's a service manual not that I intend on getting in here and particularly doing anything but that's the zero in the uh, the needle, the zero. Amazing, absolutely amazing, and uh, all of it's so clean. But I suppose you'd expect that for a a posh, because this would have been a posh one. Um, voltage measuring and resistance measuring instrument. No modern electronics, just all resistors, shunts, I'll assume. I've seen some other people taking these apart and having a look inside but I'm hoping just to give you a little bit clearer I, I can't you know I can't tell you all the things I know that's a transformer and there's a whole bunch of resistors and I'm not sure why that's in a spiral the way it is but I'm sure they're supposed to be and that resistor looks pretty funky there on the back of that doesn't it those look pretty nice. And there's the pots on each side. If I zoom in, focus. And of course, this one's got its mirror on the lower part of this particular scale. And after all that moving it about, is that on zero? Pretty much. I'll just get that needle behind, the reflection of it behind the needle. We're pretty much still there. Because that's one of the things, that's a complaint about analog meters, isn't it? That some people say that you've got to keep zeroing them but you know for the uh, I don't know what the word would be 
but for the retroness of playing around with one of these, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth going old school a little bit. And just having these two set up there for the price I got on both for. It was pretty damn cheap. And it's got the case. And we got leads. Only one pair of leads and only one case. The case came with this one. And the leads came with this one. So and they're both the same price. But it's great. I took the the, the 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 mirror off before when I first went in the back of them. Um and I cleaned it up just to make sure it was nice and you know, dust and everything free and as you can see it's very easy to see the needle, the reflection of the needle. So you can read accurately. And this is like twenty minutes already, and even though there'll be some sped up stuff. I'm sure you don't want to have a hour long video but I'm going to do a few measurements with it but first of all we're going to just take that one apart so I'm going to speed up again and um, get that one apart and I'll look inside and compare the compare the two okay well this one's much heavier it's, uh, well, that's metal as well but uh, this is this is much heavier, and the other one, this one is uh, this is your, your built-in weightlifting um, gymnasium as well. Look, it's got a diesel battery there. I don't have another battery for here. I might do the um, I think it's five of the three volt cells, you know, the round lithiums and a and a nut, and you can get it in there for the for the measurements there for the higher resistances. I have tested it all, I just hooked it up to different power supplies, you know, 15 volts and to 1.5 volt on one stage and everything works on both of them. But this is a lot heavier because uh, it's completely encased in metal. So let's whip that off. Okay, let's lift this puppy out. Should have probably put that to center point before I started moving it around too much. Just, just pop up there. Check out the inside of here again. Really clean. A little bit of a uh, little bit of grease going in there. Look. Big old resistors, wire wound. There's very big mechanical. You know, it's not just like a little tiny, not like a little tiny bit of metal there, that's a big, big chunk of metal. It's a bit. Okay, there's a bit. Bit of it's still a bit of dust, a bit of dust, but embedded in the sort of greasy part. I suppose that would be a good thing if dust did get in and it went on the grease, at least it would stay there and hopefully wouldn't get into the movement. Uh, same setup as before, diesel battery, bit of nicer sponge in there. This one's absolutely clean as a whistle inside, and even more so than the other one. So you look, but I think they could be replacement sponges. Good possibility, because look how clean that is. That's really clean. So, let's just stick that out the way. Well, of course, with this, you get this, um, I zoomed in. You get this, uh, so you can earth it. Pump and earth to it. Brilliant stuff, eh? Oh, probably went in this one. There we go, it's all done. Okay, well this is inside the 
this is what they call a, um, it's an overweight, um, but it's called test set number one. I don't want to show you it written on the back, but let's get rid of that light from doing that and if I zoom in a bit. Uh, test set number one, high sensitivity. That's the full name for this one. So we've got some, there's a couple of straight away differences on this one. One, this thing here. Two of these, I've got cases around them, these pots. And this is a plastic coated, some sort of casing on the transformer as well. And even though that looks grubby, it's dry. It is dry, and I think it's just some sort of maybe grease or something over them. But it's like a dry, dry sort of grease. It's not. I don't really want to try to, because it looks like it's like dirty, oily, doesn't it? But look, it doesn't come off. I'm trying to, trying to actually get something to come off and look. It's obviously nothing on my finger, apart from paste and stuff that I've been prying around with, with uh, chips. But that that that's not like a. I think that must be part of the protective coating for it because these, these from what I've read, uh, would go to different, you know, harsher environments, dampness places, the jungle, um, being in the military, and so they were coated. They 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 are just more protection on them, you know, and apparently they're a bit more accurate than the other ones. So that's a good thing. Okay. That's a bit different underneath than the other one. Zoom in on that. I like the way the uh I wonder if you can see the switches. And you've also got this, um, see this bottom button here? So it's all this mechanics, this bit here. Um, I think that, not that, but this. Because there's a button here and it pops out if you overload it. It's like an overload trip um, device. It's on both of them. In actual fact, I mean, they, they has got some protection built in. I can't give you all off the top of my head at the minute, but there is a few elements of protection. I'm going to go on the limb and say that these are like the custom-made resistors. Because there's no way to adjust these. So everything was made custom. Even down to the sets themselves, if they had to have slightly different, uh, you know, like if there was another one of these, but it was just slightly out, and they would just adjust one of the resistor lengths on some of these. Uh, from what I understand, I might be talking absolute dribble. This is just because I've been sat reading about them and have a drink at the same time, and sometimes you know one thing can mix into another. Maybe not so good to try and repeat it all back. But that's some interesting. Uh, and like I was saying about the switches. Now I'm going to try and turn one of these. Oh, it's, oh, it's in my hand. The, let's try and get it to stay still. Right, so see if you can get it so we can see. There it is. So, you see that moving down? 
and then you can see down the bottom there look as it goes from one position to another view at that. Lift it up. I don't know if I can get a better view because I've got to hold this camera at the same time. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. Let's see what we can see from here. See one, so you can see. Can you see that moving down? Like, it lifts that. So that must push those plates together. And what's that going from? That's going from the three volt range onto resistance, and then you get to see it push all that away. Oh, as it goes onto the resistance completely different mode but they are definitely built to last aren't they nice and precise so I mean they clunk right into place beautiful absolutely beautiful so there we go have a little look at the movement in this one not really not much different <coughs> excuse me slightly different setup though what's what's inside that yellow thing oh. I zoomed in, didn't mean to do that. Oh, and what's inside here? I don't know why that's there as well. Hold on, let me just put the other one next to it. So, I'm ready to do another few minutes and then we call it a video done. Okay, so that's the underneath of them both. Now, there are some clear differences there, aren't there? And again, let me see the mechanical trip. Um, I'm not really sure how you set it off. They both got them there, and they seem to go throughout the AVO um, multimeters. What I can see, even the AVO nine uh, multimeters. So they have these mechanical trips. Um, so obviously they must work. They must work. There are some differences in the setup here, and this test set number one was based on a Mark 1 or Mark 2 AVO 8, and of course, this is the Mark 3 AVO 8 here. And so, this one hasn't been prepped for um, different climates like the RAF one has, where it's more sort of greased up. Um, as you can see, and it's got this enclosure around the transformer. Where this one hasn't; it's just paper. That's it's nice though. Pull this up so we just get to sit on its terminals. And it's the same. I really like doing balance and acts like this, but. Get to have a little look at the difference between those inside, like that. Now, there's a lot of these type of encapsulated whatever they are in there. I'm not sure, but of course, they're not here. They've just got all these resistors now. What are these? They're like adjustable resistors. Because a lot of the rest of the layout seems to be pretty much the same. A lot more wires 
there and here, and even though they're both 10 amps, those pots look either side for the calibration, I'm zeroing on there, they've got big old enclosures, again, of course this thing here, there isn't one in there, and on this one here as well you've got a diode, this is the Ava 8 Mark III, and on this one you don't have, but then there could be a diode in here, oh sorry, in here tucked away, I don't know, a bit surprising to see an orange and a blue wire. Did anybody else notice that? And these it seems to be greys and blacks. Oh, there's a bit of blue down there. And of course I said orange and that's purple. No idea why I said orange. Maybe I was looking at the yellow. Why, why would I say orange still? Let's not get into it, I've got no idea. So there you go, and of course there's a difference between that one's got the lower mirror on the front of it and this one's higher, the reflector. Um, so that's why that's like that. I think 50 quid they cost, and I think for the money, and for the history, for the nostalgia, and just to have them there looking beautiful on the bench, I think that was a great buy. And... Um, and I'm going to be doing lots of measurements with these. I'm going to be turning to these. And I don't have to put batteries in them to get them to work. And that's another good thing. And I got one there as well, look. Because I wanted an analog meter. And I got one of them first, you know, a year or so ago. Um, but that doesn't feel, look. It just isn't one of these. These are benchmark multimeters for their time. And... You know, the pretty cock on now with my uh, Brimer. And that's not bad at all. I oh, hope you like the little look inside of the history here. Old time, old school instruments. I absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. And I don't mind having to recalibrate quite a lot, even though you don't have to actually do it once you've done it for the different resistances anyway, you've got three different parts for them. Um that's pretty much it, it is okay. And you get you know, even with them sat up there upright, you get good um good readings, pretty damn bang on, and they're actually engineered to be used face upwards for their absolute uh, maximum uh, accuracy. I think the old prongs look to connect to those fluffy bits in the back of there. Quite sharp. It's lovely the way they're built. Absolutely lovely. No, um, I was whipping them through on a printed circuit board in the, you know, flow, flow soldered. With this, it's all done by hand. <laughs> Catch you in the next one, guys. I think it would be terrible of me if I didn't uh, just throw this on uh, uh, at the end of uh, this, this, this video on the overwrite. Or maybe not, maybe I should just do a... Um, I don't know, I, don't, I can't call it a tear down, because I'm not going to take anything apart apart from take the case off. But it'd just be interesting to have a look at the inside of this, wouldn't it? Uh, let me just take the case off for two minutes at the end of this uh, Avo video. Well, as you can see on the back here, it's got a, uh, a battery compartment. 1.5 volt, 9 volt batteries to go in. Not a great deal to... But it's functional, it can do it. Oh, let me just leave that off. There's a uh, this bale is movable fuse compartment. Probably not the greatest fuse. And then it's just a case of trying to split it open. Now I've undone the screws. At least it felt like they were one. Now it feels more undone. So you can just close 
and open. Oh, okay. And there we go. Enclosed. Nice. Let's see if we can just unclip this. Okay, well I hope that I can put it back together again. Uh, doesn't look much to it, does it? And they say this thing can do 10 amps, 250 volts. Oh, sorry, 2,500 volts. It's got a... I wouldn't want to stick anything through that. I put it on my mains before, I don't think I'll be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big difference, isn't it, to what's inside? Yeah, you go. At least this one is quite easy just to take apart and then put back together again. Even though, yeah, the air bed wasn't particularly difficult, so you know, half dozen screws. Brilliant. So there you go. A very quick look at the inside of this. Just as a modern day comparison of something which is nowhere like the Avo. I'll add it on to the end. Cheers for watching guys.